You take to everyone, dear friends. You may ask if you say that you are an apologist of the meaning and words of techniques of redemption. Where are the percutaneous techniques? Here they are. This 42 years old patient had got a tongue type Sanders 3BC, calcaneal fracture after fall from high. We have undertaken percutaneous reduction and fixation. We used patient position on the table according to Rodmont and Matiasic. By the way, if you want a review about positioning of the patient for calcaneal restoration, write a comment below and maybe I will do it soon. A distraction device was used for traction and retention of the calcaneal tuber during the reduction of the articular facet. Through a step incision on the posterior surface along the lateral border of the Achilles tendon, an elevator was introduced under the articular facet and the lateral part of the joint was elevated. Please note that the fragment that is considered to be the starting point for reduction, it is called the constant fragment, is displaced to the bottom and also requires reduction when using this technique. This technique changed the paradigm and calcaneal tuber held by a distraction device becomes a starting point for reduction. In this case, the middle part of the facet stuck between the calcaneal tuber and the sustentaculum tally, so a gap between them became the optimal window for the reduction tool which was inserted through a stab incision on the medial surface of the heel above the distractor's wire. By the way, such a small vertical skin incision near the wire on the medial surface allows to relieve skin resistance during traction and achieve better efficiency of the distraction device. After that, we inserted provisional wires subhondrally into the sustentaculum tally, rimmed and installed lag screws. The lateral fragment was drilled with a 3.5 mm drill. Cancelo's 6.5 mm screws were introduced by Rodemont and Matiasic technique. Assess the position of the fragments on post-operative CT. The articular facet is elevated and reduced. The potential possibility of subfibular impeachment is eliminated. In conclusion, I would like to say that use of minimally invasive reduction techniques should be rational. Often there is misunderstanding of what is happening inside. For example, an accidental rotation of one of the articular fragments makes this fragment invisible or unclear on image intensifier. In this regard, in cases of unclear C-arm pictures or unsuccessful attempts to improve the position of the fragments, I recommend to continue reduction process through the sinus tarsi approach. My own experience showed that stubborn maintaining of percutaneous approach leads to a long surgery and fair reduction. And that's all for today. Ask questions and write your opinion about percutaneous and open reduction techniques. How far can you go to stay mini-invasive? Good luck!